Hi, welcome back to my channel and to day number two of this Inkvent calendar. So let's opening, let's open the window number two that's here on the top. And I find this not so easy to open. And ink we have inside is let me focus. Candy cane, which is a standard ink. It looks like a reddish, pinkish ink. So, now, as I did yesterday, I'm going to choose a pen to put this ink inside and then I will show you how it writes. So, I'll be right back. See you. And I'm back to present you now, live, the color of the candy cane. And I would say that, first, this is a standard ink, so no shimmer and no sheen. And I would say this is um, a red, a pinkish red, bright ink. And this is the, the best description I can make of it right now. Now, the pen I chose to use with this ink to test it on paper was this, another way of trying to match... It's not a real match of the, of the same color, but I would say it would, it would be nice. And this pen have been an inked for a while now, and I really like these Leonardo pens, so I, I fetched this one and... Uh, put ink inside, and this is the Leonardo Ficina Italiana Furore, uh, and the color of this is Passion Red. Very beautiful red pen with a marbled pattern, and this one has an M nib. So I chose this one for the candy cane, which is the color for number two, for day number two. When um, you look at this color compared with other reds. I can see there are some similarities. Maybe these ones are a little bit darker and maybe slightly more saturated. So we have here the Monte Grappa Red and here the Pelican Edelstein Star Ruby, also a special ink for 2019. But I would say this ink is quite comparable. I would say if uh, that any of those could easily replace, not the same exact color, but the function you may have on your mind for the candy cane ink. Now, let's also see this. And this is the chromatography I made. You may see that there is no baseline there where I draw the line with this, with this pen. So, all the ink or no, none of this ink is water resistance and the, the color went all up there. So this is mostly like the color of yesterday that is completely water soluble. It is, I would say this is a washable ink. It's not water resistant at all. Now, let's go for the paper and see how this ink looks like on paper. And first, let's see how it behaves on the uh, Moleskine notebook paper. This is not from a real notebook, it's from a planner, but it's not important. Let's just see, see how it behaves. I would say that this ink behaves quite well on this paper. It doesn't feather a lot, although you can see some feathering in some places, like the ink going along some fibers. You may see there, there is a little line that is uniting those. Also here, below this A, there is also a little down uh, going uh, line. But I think this is because of the fibers of the paper, not really because of the ink. I also would say that the ink is also quite plain with no shading and you can see it easily here on the swatch. Now I have here also the Oxford Optic paper 
and it is a whiter paper than this one. It is a better quality, it's like coated paper. The line looks uh, narrower on this paper, it behaves much better and you can see almost no line, uh, no color variation, although you can see a little bit more here than there, but not a real uh, line ver uh, color ver variation, I would say. And finally, or not finally, but almost, we have here the Navigator 80 grams per square meter, which is uh, copy paper, and in this paper the ink spreads more. It's interesting because it spreads even more than on the Moleskine, and I would say this paper is a little bit better than Moleskine, and you can see how it uh, spreads more, and I would say here also you can see more shading that than on the other two, but not, nothing really visible. So this is what we have to see about the, the ink, I would say, but I would say the margins of some letters are more marked, more saturated than the rest. And now, yes, it's finally, let's go for the, um, the Rhodia.pad. On this paper it behaves much better than on those, in terms of spreading the line. The line is much, much thinner here. So when we think about an F nib or an M nib, we have to think about the paper we are going to use it on. It is quite similar to the behavior on the on the Oxford. I made the, the test of the drying time and I would say around 30 seconds it will be dry. And I also did the same test of putting some drops of water there. And you see it deleted, it erased completely the uh, the ink on the places where in the places where the water got on. So this ink is also completely erasable from paper, completely water uh, soluble with no water resistance. So if you are trying to make a permanent document with this ink, it's not the best thing. However, it's quite a bright and nice color and I would say it meets the the festive days. I would prefer a color that is not so pinkish, so magenta. I would prefer a more bright and uh, pure uh, red. Now let's go for our phrase, the usual one, which is the The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. This nib is real good. I, I really like this nib, but I think that this ink also makes it smooth, smooth. It makes the, the it's very, I would say it is lubricated ink and the flow is, is, is really good and it's very pleasant to write with this ink. And I go now for the questions, same questions I made today, uh, yesterday. Because this is a limited edition for this calendar only, how much do you like the color? Would you like to see it going to the permanent in the regular line of uh, diamine, or do you think a little bit like me that it is similar enough to with Pelican Edel style? Although this is a specific year color for 2019, but I would say it is very similar to this one, or even to Montegrappa Red. So I would say if this would not go to the regular line, maybe it wouldn't be missed that much, but. What is your opinion? I really would like to say. So if you have something to add to this conversation, please um, write on the comments below and I will see you tomorrow again for the next ink review. Bye.